Welcome to another episode of Exploring the Vintage NFT Space podcast with Zero G. Today, I'm uh, excited to have with me another OG Rare Pepe artist, Aryu. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, really looking forward to talking to you today. You've got a uh, uh, a really awesome card. I uh, It's one that, that always makes you do a double take when you see it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, before we talk about your card, um, why don't you tell me the, um, uh, tell me how you found out about cryptocurrency and then what was the thing that actually pushed you over the edge to, uh, to finally make your first purchase? Uh, sure. So the first time I ever heard of Bitcoin was back when the Mt. Gox situation happened where the hacking um and i heard about like this internet money and i'm like what is this and um i didn't really pay much attention all i knew was like really expensive and i'm like who in their right mind is spending money on some random online currency <laughs> and then i didn't really hear anything about it for years um until like my cousin kind of introduced me to it in 2017 with coinbase uh, he's like, oh, there's Bitcoin and then there's this thing called Ethereum and there's this other cheap one called Litecoin. And, and so then I, I, you know, I set up an account and my first purchase was buying Litecoin at like, I think it was like $20 or something. Um, and so that was like my first, like diving into, into crypto. Yeah. And what did you, um, you know, what was the the motivation at the time just to to play with it and see what it was all about? Correct. Yeah, it was more of just like seeing what this is about. And then I kind of like dove more into what Bitcoin was all about and how it was kind of retaliation of like the, the banking system of how it just failed everyone. And, the, you know, Satoshi Nakamoto created the white paper and this and that. And, and so then I started diving into that. And I was like, this is pretty interesting that like it's decentralized. You can't be controlled, have your own keys to your to your, your money. And and I, I almost became fascinated with it from, from there on out. Yeah, it's um that's really cool that it got you to actually look into the banking, um, the banking angle, because that um that's something that I I'm passionate about. I I um I approached uh, I got into crypto and I was already familiar with like the kind of like the Austrian economics and um, precious metals and hard money and kind of the whole, you know, evil nature of, of um, the current implementation of fiat money. So um, that it's, you know, and it's even more important today that, you know, we see more people um, really become cognizant of, of the risks and, you know, where they're trying to take the, the legacy banking system. So uh, correct. Yeah. And I actually used to be in banking when I was younger. No uh, way. Yeah. Yeah. I originally started as in Wells Fargo and it was a teller, then moved up to a banker, then eventually became a sales and service manager, then a branch manager. Um, so I, yeah, I know about the banking uh, pretty well. And so that's kind of why I dove in even further. Wow. Then, well, that must have been a little bit of a, um, a, a real awakening to, to, uh, you know, to, to, dig in and read and, and understand after having been a part of it. Correct. Exactly. That's why I was more fascinated with it. I'm like, Hmm, this uh, seems pretty interesting. Like I really like the whole, the whole aspect of not being controlled by banking because they control everything. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, yeah. And, and right now the big push is, um, is towards um, CBDCs. And, you know, I, I think. They're terrifying. I think the, yeah, I think the to me, I think the um, the writing on the wall is that um, personally, I think the the it's pretty apparent that the the goal is to um uh, like we've entered like the looting phase uh, of like of national governments, treasuries, and I think they're purposely um, trying to extract as much value as they uh, while they purposely blow up the the existing national currencies. To cause a currency crisis to full and present the um, CBDCs as the as a forced replacement um, upon people, so yeah, and be able to control them with it too. And yeah, yeah. terrifying. It's it really is terrifying. That's like the perfect word because it, it, it'll bring them back into power, <laughs> even though we're trying to take it away from them. 
this will end up, I mean, it can get ugly. It can turn into basically like China where they control your, your money and they can shut you off at any time. And I think, yeah, it's not the way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to me, I think the final, what, what I think should have been the final wake-up call for um, for normies w was the um, Canadian trucker protest in Canada where yep. where we had a, a Western nation um, just go, uh, immediately go to debank people that were peacefully protesting policies of their government. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think that's... Uh, I don't think any other Western government would hesitate to do something similar if push comes to shove. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super terrified about the, the potential for CBDCs. So that's one, uh, one reason I've, I've been passionate about NFTs is that, um, it's a, it's kind of like the normie bait to get them like, uh, to get them on like in, into cryptocurrency as, um, as something that's like understandable and easily uh, uh, really appealing and, and uh, understandable for normies. And then they can, you know, it gets them onboarded with the wallet and they can, you know, kind of like you did, you can learn more about, um, about kind of like the, the reasons for why it even existed. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what the government's going to try to do is try to get people to like, kind of get into it. Mm -hmm. and and use it and like oh look how easy it is to use it and then get people hooked onto it um but hopefully the smart people will be like hey i'd rather go the uh, other route where you can't control my my wallet my keys or any of that and being able to just print as much as you want like you currently do <laughs> in the normal economy uh because they're going to be able to just print as much as they want i mean you know they're going to do that so oh yeah um so yeah, I hopefully people, the smart people will actually catch on to that and shift towards the Bitcoin way. Um, but we'll see. Time will tell yeah. on that. Yeah, yeah. I won't dwell uh, much more on it. I, I guess the other, the the positive thing is that the only, uh, or we've seen one CBDC experiment fail already. Um, what was it in Tanz, uh, Tanzania or Nigeria? Uh, one of the mm -hmm. African countries, the government tried to foist that on people and um it was an abject failure so Good. <laughs> but yeah so um yeah so you got involved um you know after uh you know and got litecoin and so how did you go from from kind of like toying around with with litecoin and, and how did you find out about um nfts back then Okay, so so yeah, then I started like buying Ethereum, then I started buying Bitcoin, and so then I started like just growing growing my uh bags there. And then I was in some random crypto Facebook group, and I can't remember which one it was, but mm -hmm. there was a couple of them I was in, and some guys started talking about Pepe Cash. <laughs> and I'm like, what's Pepe Cash? He goes, just get it, it's gonna go up a lot. And I'm like, well, what is it? He goes, it's what's a frog. And I'm like, a frog? And so I was like, okay. So I kind of started looking into it. And and then I then like to get it, you had to go through Tux Exchange, which was like a Japanese site. And I was so confused. And back then, it, it's not how it is today, where you can just go on a YouTube video and it's like, oh, this is how you transfer money to that. You're looking at the site going, what am I doing? And so I had to like figure it out and send, send money randomly into that exchange. I had no idea what I was doing. And so I put it in there and bought myself some Pepe cash. <laughs> and um, and then I was told you have to go to this rare Pepe wallet. And so I got a rare Pepe wallet. And then so then I went and, um, and started seeing all these pictures of frog cards. And I'm like what is this and so then i just like i fell in love from the get-go i'm like oh this is hilarious this is so funny and so um then i started like go i went to the telegram channel and started like talking to people in there and a lot of people are really cool and um then i just started buying pepe's that way <laughs> <laughs> yeah it uh once you start it, it uh, it's an addiction, you know, once you, once you, it clicks, you know. Exactly. And so then, yeah, I just start 
buying them and they were cheap. They were like a couple of dollars each here and there. And I was just like buying them left and right. And it became, it became an obsession. My wife would like walk in and actually my, my fiance at the time, um, like we walk in on me on my computer and just like see all these frog pictures. And she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm buying these cards. They're like, they're like baseball cards, but online with frogs. <laughs> she thought I was crazy. And, uh, and we were actually uh, saving up for a wedding. And so I'm sitting there spending all this money <laughs> on these frog <laughs> cards. And, uh, and she's like, this is such a waste of money. We have, we're trying to spend money for our wedding and you're buying these dumb cards and i'm like honey i promise you sometime in the future these are going to be worth something and she was just against it completely and i'm like you know what when the, when these do go up you get none of it <laughs> <laughs> oh that's awesome <laughs> Yeah. yeah so out of curiosity, what does she think now about it? Oh yeah. Well, she, her, her, uh, attitude changed quite quickly in 2021 when everything started <laughs> popping off. And so, um, I told her, I'm like, um, when we do buy our next house, there's going to be multiple Pempe, uh, paintings that will be on our walls. And she's like, fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah well, um it so you've created your own card but um i guess before we talk about that so had you created any other like do you have a background in art or digital media before that or is this your first <laughs> no, zero i'm a horrible artist i got a b in art like who gets a b in art because like, how bad <laughs> i was um yeah not a good artist whatsoever um to know nothing about graphic design nothing at all zero and what happened was is that the first i think 30 series were already done mm -hmm. and so then i don't know i can't remember when it was the end of 2017 was it or the beginning of 2018 when they opened yeah. back the last five series yeah and when they said we're opening it back up i'm like oh so then i was talking to somebody in the group and they're like oh this is what you have to do and and so um and they're like, they have to get approved by multiple scientists. It has to be like funny or witty. It can't just be some basic art. So I was like, okay. So I was like, I'm going to try to come up with something that's like so obnoxious and goofy. And, um, and so I found a guy on Fiverr to actually make it for me because I couldn't even do it. <laughs> that's how <laughs> my skills are not good at all in terms of graphics and graphic design and stuff. And so, um, I don't know. I think I was watching the movie Euro Trip. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Uh-huh. It just happened to be on TV and I was watching Euro Trip and the part with David Hasselhoff came on. And I'm like, hmm. How about doing something completely ridiculous with David Hasselhoff? <laughs> <laughs> and so so then yeah, I started I started looking at some stuff on online and with David Hasselhoff, and I found an image of him with his mankini and his vest. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. And so then I was like, I'm gonna I want to make it like a like a gif. So it just repeats over and over again. <laughs> and so that's how that came about. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I uh I I'm kind of like you. I um I I don't have the uh, I haven't developed the skills to be like a proficient artist by any means. So I've um for all my stuff, I've I've commissioned artists too. Um but yeah, it it really um it really turned out well every time you see it. Like you, you have to keep staring at it for a little while. You know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just him, him constantly coming out of his crotch over and over again. I was like, "Oh, this is great. This is good." Yeah. So, what was that like when you? Uh, well, I guess first off, so you saw that they reopened the directory, and you just had the like, you just wanted to have your own card. Um, yeah so i was like okay i i should i want to be part of this i think this is going to be cool like down the road as history and back then they weren't called nfts so yeah. you know i was like oh just art on the blockchain that's like basically how i talked about it and i'm like oh this is this will be really cool like i'll be one of the pioneers of people putting art on the blockchain <laughs> and i didn't know you can make multiple so i only just made one but if oh, i knew okay. you could do more i would have i would have made more for sure um but yeah, that's that's basically 
you know, how that came about. Yeah. So once you had yours approved, um, um, I mean, so what, what was your strategy there? Did you just sell some for Pepe cash and XCP or. I actually didn't sell any in the beginning. Oh, really? Uh, I just kept, yeah, I just had them. And then I think not for a year, I don't know, a year or two, I might've put one out there for like a very small amount. I can't even remember. Um, it was probably pennies, <laughs> not much. Um, but yeah, I wasn't even looking to make any profit whatsoever. I just, I was buying them because I thought they were funny. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. And, um, you know, I mean, talk about a great opportunity too to be able to build a collection while they were still affordable too. Mm -hmm. They were pennies. Like I remember um, like one of my favorite cards in the whole collection was the, is the vintage pep. Yeah. Uh, the Honus Wagner. Cause I was a big baseball collector, a baseball card collector when I was a kid. And I was like, Oh man, I love this thing. And I think I bought a ton of them for like five to 10 bucks a piece. Oh, awesome. And yeah. And, and yeah, that's like one of my favorite cards to like up there with like Ken Dinsky pep. Like, I love that card too. And then um, the, the, those cool, like art ones that people actually are good artists that, that made. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, I bought a bunch of those and a bunch of sports ones. I bought like the, the Jordan, the, the Jordan pep, Pepe and and um and like the Babe Ruth one like yeah so I was just uh I just was just finding the ones that were funny like I just random just super random and uh yeah I was obsessed basically <laughs> yeah it's uh I mean I was blown away too when I learned that you know basically there's so many first and rare Pepe's um you know like the like from, from at least as far as I'm aware now um you know the first basically sports card looking nfts were rare pepes and mm -hmm. um, um you know so many other cool firsts too I, i'm always a big fan of uh of like net idx's um um shro pepe too I, I always like thought that was amazing and it, it looks cool too but you know yeah. what he was able to pull off back then i don't know yeah there's just uh like rare pepes is such a, a like if you have the collecting bug it's it's like a very deep rabbit hole, you know? <laughs> oh, big, big, big. And it's funny, like people like are making memes nowadays and you can always go back to Pepe and there's already been a meme about it. <laughs> yeah. Someone had done it like seven years ago. It's, like, it's, it's pretty impressive how people came up with stuff back then that are so pretty relevant today. And it, it captured so many of the important, um, important events of the, of the time or, um, you know, like we had the, um it captured the uh carlos matos guy from um bitconnect there's a oh, couple yes. cards cards about him i i uh i mm. always love those and um, just yeah just a, um you know it's it also is just a really fun collection because you know like you said you know you could you have like people who've done fiber art to people who hand drew art for to people that are serious artists that put out like you know really impressive stuff um I don't know. It's, it's just a really fun and engaging collection. And, um, you know, definitely. And then the first AI art was done there too. Yeah. Yeah. Which really crazy in a way too. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first, the first, um, uh, at least the first on XCP is on, is in rare Pepe's. There's what, like, I think around 10 where they used AI tools to create the art. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. it's really, but you know, that's a, that's another, um, Thing, it's another thing I've become like it, to me it seems super obvious that you know we've just witnessed really in the last what like two years we've witnessed like AI art go from like creepy and kind of putting out like like I don't know bizarre like kind of funny weird uh output to putting out like really hard to hard to distinguish from professional work or just mm -hmm. uh and, and empowering individuals to um, to create in, in such a accessible and easy way that it's a it's a big revolution that I think like long term I think having these first AI um, NFTs are a real big deal. Yeah, I, I completely agree, and it's only going to get bigger. <laughs> it's only going to get bigger. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we already have we've already seen like so many ripples throughout the real world where you know. An example I see commonly is now you have people like um, 
you know, websites that do news or what whatnot, instead of paying a, uh, you know, paying a freelance artist to, to do like the thumbnails, you like, you see, it's pretty apparent nowadays, you have so many of those where they just use AI to, you know, mid journey or something to spit out the thumbnails, and it looks great, you know, so Yep, and much faster. It gets done instantly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you can just, um, the other thing that's really interesting too, is that it's a, a different, you know, working with an artist is a collaborative process, but, um, you know, working with AI is, it's, you could, you could say it's collaborative or directed as well, but like there's an instant feedback loop where you can just keep iterating over and over again, where you wouldn't want to, uh, you know, with the real artist, you would run, want to respect their, uh, you know, their sanity and not, Exactly. you know, not be a jerk by just keep like giving them all these small minor details. <laughs> yep, it definitely changes the game. Yeah. Yeah, for, for sure. So, um, but yeah, so you've, you've been collecting for, for quite a long time and we've seen the, um, and we've seen that, that, that bull run in 2021 that kind of put rare Pepe's on the map. Um, you know, it's kind of died off since then, but I know you're still, uh, you're still active in the, in the community. Um, you know, are, um, do you have plans to make any of any contribute to any of the, of the existing collections on counterparty or on Ethereum? Mm -hmm. um no i don't plan on now <laughs> i don't plan Yeah. on doing none of that now <laughs> yeah. It, uh, I've, um, I've, I've had a good time. Um, you know, I've, I've submitted a couple cards to like a couple of the different directories, like fake rares and dank directory and whatnot. It's, um, it's been really fascinating to see that, uh, you know, counterparty has continued to, to thrive even after that, that bull run kind of died off. I, um, you know, I'm, I think the future is bright for, uh, you know, for these vintage NFTs and, and counterparty as a whole, um, I just think it's it's a matter of of um of basically getting a greater awareness of the importance of the of cryptocurrency and what that can do for people. But I, I just think it's a matter of time before we see um you know more people kind of come back and in, into the space. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, people love to collect things. It's since the beginning of time, basically. And these are the first iterations of, you know, like baseball cards back when they first came out. And that's why like the Honus Wagner is worth six and a half million or whatever it is cost, you know, people just Yeah. like collecting things. And so when people like more and more people come into the space, they're like, oh, well, what were the first ones? And It, I think, you know, eventually these things will be worth a lot of money, like all of them. Um, anything with a, a supply of less than 500 will be worth a lot of money where the average person's not even be able to afford it. Um, as for now, it's a steal. So <laughs> I highly recommend people to pick them up now before they get out of control in the next five to 10 years. I don't know. I'm always kind of torn because, um, you know, like I'm, I, you know, I, I record these podcasts to help, um, to help like give a record towards the, the help people understand the the history and the, like the origin of the, of the art and, and get an insight into the artist. But uh, I'm also kind of conflicted too, because I don't want more people to uh, find out about it yet. Cause I still want to keep collecting Want to collect them. more? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. but no, I, I, I You know, like I, I thought it would have already happened by now, but I still, I, I agree with you. I still think, like long term, it's you know the scarcity for these, like you said, like sub one thousand supply cards. I mean, I have a hard time imagining of like a future, whether it's five, ten, or fifteen years, where there's not a thousand people that are willing to pay a non -in insignificant sum to own, like own these cards, and I. I Kind of like you, I I think it'll be, um, it'll be a flex to own any like, you know, hundred supply card. You know, it it would be, I think it'll be very hard to put together a, a sizable collection unless you're extremely wealthy in the future. Exactly. It's uh, it's just going to become harder and harder as as time goes on because people like us are not going to sell them Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> unless you pay up a really big amount. Like me, I'm never going to sell any of my singles. I'll sell my doubles or I'll trade those. 
But the ones that I have just one of, I'm never going to sell because I know down the line they will be worth a lot of money. Yeah, I'm I'm like you. I um I've been trading some of my duplicates, but I don't think I've ever sold a a, a rare Pepe. I only have one of, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you know, as I'm collecting, this supply is getting like drained from the market. Like it's not, I'm not, you know, I'm not selling. So you know, at least for the foreseeable future. So um, you know, I just think that it's a it's an interesting opportunity for you know the people who are around that. you know, recognize it for what it is, you know, of course we could both be wrong and, you know, smoking crack here, but I don't, I don't think True. so, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but I, yeah, it, it's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah. You know, we've got some, um, you know, speaking of, of people coming into the space, there's um, uh, right now they're working on some improvements counterparty that would make, counterparty more uh, accessible for a greater number of users you know we've had um you know in the past you know people had to use either rare pepe wallet or uh, counter wallet or free wallet um you know and it, it's like getting people to understand you know you know there has to be a, a level of understanding of how counterparty works um Yes, to it's to daunting deal yeah for yeah the average person that's not tech savvy. It's hard. And that's another, that's, that's a barrier to entry. And that's, it's scary for sure. For people who don't know it, like it's terrifying. I've, I've told a couple of my buddies, I'm like, Oh, you should totally come get some of these Pepe's. And they're like, man, that's way too much work. I'm not going to do that. And, and so if whenever they do implement this stuff, like into magic Eden, where you're not going to need an emblem involved or any of that stuff and just make it. So you just click on it and buy it. It's, I think, I think it changes the game a lot um, because your, your average person is not going to go through the hoops that like we had to do back in the day. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, you know, and and you know, while Emblem Vault really did unlock, you know, a counterparty to to all these new communities, um, you know, one thing that kind of held it back is that you know Ethereum has you know up until right now has been like pretty very high fee to where you'd have to pay a um, lot. a lot. Yeah. So like as an example, like I guess on average, most of the last year you'd have to pay something like. I don't know, $70, $100 to just to make a purchase of an emblem vault. And then you have to pay another like $20, $20 $30 to crack it if you're going to crack it. Yeah, it ends Um, up being more expensive than the card itself. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? So, um, and that's what we've seen is that the majority of the emblem vault sales have been um, been higher value cards because, uh, because of that. And I mean, and for, you know, I'm a, a long-term collector too. So every time I, I buy them on, In emblem vaults, I'm cracking them, you know, pretty quickly too. Because, um, you know, while while uh, emblem vault has has been really great for facilitating uh, liquidity and trades, and um, uh, you know, it it enables a, a lot of great features. Um, you know, long term, it, it's a custodial service, and you know, again, if, if the future plays out like we're talking about, where these really are as coveted as I as I think they will be, then Um, exposing your collection to that like counterparty risk, third party risk, um, I don't think is really that appealing like long term. Um, you know, it's uh, it's very easy to see how we can't predict the future, but um, you know, you're exposing risk to like if the company gets sued for some reason, or you know, they rug, or one of the devs gets hacked, or what you know, however. however whatever it's it's just an, an L, a non-zero risk that you you can avoid by having it on native counterparty Correct. Yeah. And on top of that, all the Bitcoin maxis hated that it was being bought on Ethereum. <laughs> they were not happy about that. <laughs> yeah it's funny um i was just dealing with someone uh recently where they um they basically refused to um to buy an emblem vault uh on open sea even though it's something that they're trying to acquire just out of principle you know so it's like Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of guys like that in the in the rare Pepe community. They're like, nah, I'm not doing, I'm not getting anything from Ethereum. That's it's kind of funny. yeah you know it um it'll be interesting to see how that plays out we've seen ordinals and 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 more recently runes have have come out which are um 
I guess more different different uh, protocols for, for handling NFTs on on Bitcoin. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how people. Um, ultimately, I think people are going to realize that you know while these are new, they have their own limitations, and that counterparty still has a place and was doing it. You know, uh, what was it six, seven, eight years before, even longer. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. close to 10 years before uh, Rune, so, you know, 2014. Yeah, yeah, agree. Yeah, so, um, it, you know, I guess looking looking towards the future, is, um, is, there, any, uh, is there anything in terms of uh, NFTs or, or blockchain that you're really watching or fascinated with right now? Um, I'm, the NFTs that I've been picking up over the last handful of years are all game-related. Um, because I think that's going to be huge in the future. Like, I think everything's going to turn that way where you're going to be able to own the NFTs in games and oh, being yeah. able to like, build up your characters and their skins and stuff like that and turn around and sell them. I think that's going to be massive. So I bought a bunch of different NFTs from different games that I think have a, a future. Um, so yeah, I've, I've, I've are you definitely... Talking like modern get like new games or are you talking like web about three games that are that are okay. coming out like for example okay. like first that's coming out um that's run by loopify uh i think that's gonna do really well to an mmo rpg uh, oh cool and, and so yeah it's and so yeah they have he you can buy real estate in, in the game like land plots and then you can um their skins were like the skins that you own you can have in the game so you can you can distinguish yourself between other people in the game um and then there's like the trees themselves and he made 420 trees and it's going to bear fruit within the game and people who pick from the fruit are going to you know get, the money goes to the owners of the trees and so it's like this huge system that they're they're building out and, and pretty excited about it so i bought a tree a couple of years ago but i'm just waiting for the game like right now it's in beta so games like that there's several of them that are out there um and and so yeah i've I put a bunch of money in into several different uh web3 games that are be coming out i'm with you i think it's um i not only do i think it's like inevitable i've been surprised that we haven't seen like any we haven't already seen something really blow up like utilizing nfts for that's such a simple like for an mmorpg that's like a no-brainer like the other thing i thought would have been already done by now would be something like a, like a super simple um implementation like um uh, you know something like csgo where again the skins like aren't even involved in the gameplay itself it's, it's strictly like a um it's strictly like a trading slash monetization mm -hmm. part like element of the game where they don't have to modify the game logic at all like you, like that's a to me it's like it's a no-brainer so yeah, yeah i agree like gaming it's is tough. oh yeah 100 percent, and it it like once, um, you know, like what, because I've kind of, I've tried to follow some of the the, the developments in NFTs and gaming too, because I I also think there's a, a definite future there. But one thing um, was interesting to see is how over the last few years, like um, at least in the press, uh, you know, like gamers have been really turned off by NFTs, uh, primarily because I think uh, because the game publishers. Uh, took a super predatory approach and did basically oh, yeah. did it in the absolute worst way possible to where, yeah. um, you know, they weren't, they didn't deploy these on open chains. Like they weren't really, there's re no real benefit to the, to the gamers at that point where, you know, once we see it, um, like you were talking about with, with Treeverse and, um, you know, like allowing people to have, you know, a, a permanent ownership of these assets. I think the other thing I think is interesting is we'll have um, it'll allow these these other games to take advantage and recognize that you're like your ownership of something that's really cool from a different game. Like so, these studios can build like sequels and and other mm -hmm. like and even even other studios or or just indie games can recognize that hey, if there's something that's really significant in the gaming world and like you own it then you get like a special perk or disc badge yeah. or you know whatever you know yeah it, it builds community for yeah. sure yeah exactly i mean um you know it, like and as part of that that you know like 
we even see that within like the CSGO scene too, you know, in, in RuneScape and and all those other like in like traditional MMOs, you know, owning like top tier gear is kind of like a, you know, a flex in and of itself. And now you can, you know, truly own it instead of, you know, until you stop paying your subscription, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. oh, yeah, that that's cool. So uh, are there any other projects uh, that you've got your eye on besides that? Uh, yeah, big time is a big one. I bought a ton of land in that one. Um, that one's it, it's like the first AAA rated game, <clears throat> and so there's some big big hitters behind that. Um, and then there's. There's like Digi Guy Gaku um, with uh, Gabriel Ledon. He used to be like one of the head guys at Machine Zone. Uh, so he he came out with that NFT series and he's going to be coming out with the game. I don't know when, <laughs> but um, I bought a bunch of his a Genesis that came out a couple years ago. Um, let's see what else is there. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch. I just can't think of Oh, Neon Heroes looks pretty prom promising on Solana. Um uh, That one's kind of, it's funny, they're like little cats in mech suits. Um, <laughs> that so yeah, sounds I bought great. some, yeah, I bought some of their, uh, their NFT heroes. Um, and there's, there's just a bunch. There's so many. There's a ton that are coming out. I think in the next couple of years, it's going to be all over the place. I, I truly do. But yeah, so I, I'm, I've got my hands in a, in a bunch of different games that I think uh, have potential. I think the other thing that's interesting too is that we were talking about AI earlier. I think um, what we're going to see is that these AI tools are going to enable like indie slash lower lower budget teams to spin up games that are like really compelling and have high quality assets that like it's I think it's going to take a couple blockbusters from indies before we see big studios actually follow suit and implement like blockchain for uh, for their assets. So I I think it'll be some of these indie studios that will, you know, do the innovation and and you know show that it actually is is legit. So yeah, Agreed. for sure. Agreed. And whoever does mobile right is going to make billions. Mobile, because, Oh yeah. you know, people that love like the Candy Crush type of games, you put that into crypto, it, it, oh man, absolute smasher. So whoever the first couple that do that are going to do very, very well. It doesn't even matter. It can be 8-bit graphics. They'll smash. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know, like, um, yeah, like Candy Crush. I don't know what it's pulling in now, but I know for years it was like a, like half a Oh, billion dollars or a billion oh dollars yeah. a year in revenue. Several million dollars a day. Like it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's just when. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, uh, and it allows the, these games uh, publishers to like, they can receive the, their payments directly in, you know, crypto or fiat Exactly. or, or stable coins or So whatever much easier. and buy yeah they they get to bypass these like the crazy fees that um uh, that these platforms are, are charging on you know for whether it be steam or ios or google play you know where they're taking like a 30 percent cut or something you know for Exactly. no that's cool yeah I'll, I'll have to look into a couple of these other ones that you mentioned that i, I wasn't familiar with but i i agree i think um, um I think it might actually be the catalyst for the next real Yep, um, I agree. surge in, in you know. Real ca real use case. <laughs> it's a utility. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Both You crypto know. isn't, uh, but gaming will for sure bring the masses in, I think. I mean, like the, the, what I was, I was thinking about this recently and, and the way I was explaining it to someone else was that, um, you know, the first DLC, which was that horse armor for one of those, um, Uh, one of those Bethesda games. Um, imagine if you could say that you own the first horse armor, you know, well, you know, with crypto, you actually can and say, like, let's say that horse armor was limited to a thousand or something. I mean, imagine how, how expensive, like that, that first horse armor would be nowadays, Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. you know? Huge. So, yeah, I, I agree. I think um, and gaming is already bigger than, um, It's bigger than music, and I think it's even Movies. bigger than Yeah, TV it's bigger and than movies, all of them. right? Yeah, it's Yeah. bigger than all of them. Yep. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's ripe for, just for um, uh, you know, for creative uh, innovation, you know, creative disruption. Yep. Very bullish on it. Yeah, well, that's cool. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Um, 
I, I guess the only other thing I, I'd say is, um, you know, looking forward in, in terms of the the, the gaming, uh, the blockchain gaming scene, um, we've seen kind of like the the rise of, um, well, we mentioned ordinals and and uh, runes and, and some of these other like NFT technologies, but uh, and also the rise of these different blockchains. I think that's also going to be another thing that I'm going to be watching with interest going forward is which blockchains end up being used for these uh, to host and and you know to settle these NFT assets. So. Um, you know, right now there's not a. I'm not aware of a of an L2 that's capable of that for for Bitcoin, and the TPS right now is too low to to sustain that. So, um, I think we'll see something like, um, you know, Solana. Like it, it has a pretty high TPS, and they're working on improving that. Form. There's also L2s for for Ethereum. So it'll be interesting to see which chains end up being dominant um, or most popular going forward as well yes time will tell like you know there's avax there's solana there's yeah there's arbitrum i mean there's there's uh the base that's coming out you know so it's like we'll, we'll see it, it it comes down to who can actually do what they say <laughs> that they can possibly do it's like who can actually make it work and not have the chain break that yeah it, it it has to when it comes to games like like, like again like you think of what would have been a slam dunk in terms of uh, use case would have been something like Pokemon Go, right? Where, yep. um, but again, I, I read a, a an article about how they developed that, where they did this like really scalable infrastructure in, in Kubernetes, which was at the yep. time really innovative for game developers, and that's how they were able to scale. Like they yeah, blew up yeah. from they blew up from going, um, you know, just being kind of like a a small game to it at back when they launched it, it became a one of the number one apps across most, uh, I think both app stores, you know, though they were making also billions of dollars off that game too. So um, yeah, like you said, it, it's like for games, they actually have to uh, put up or shut up. They, it's, they can't just promise, you know, yep. that it works. It actually has to work. So, mm -hmm. but Hey, maybe, maybe that's what it takes to have the money to, um, to force uh, like, like to push into the ecosystem to force, uh, some uh, some chains that actually can scale, you know. So I think it's a positive. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, well, um, yeah, definitely a lot of fun. Um, uh, you know, we kind of bounced around a little bit, uh, gaming and um, rare Pepe's and, uh, and whatnot. Is there anything else you wanted to to cover before we uh, call it a wrap? No, I think I think we got it all. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, it was a lot of fun.